Hey there, welcome back. I have my third trimester, my 33, third trimester update, symptoms, check-in, and also, of course, because the last one I did, I did an Ipsy, we have the May Ipsy here. I figure I'm gonna tackle that on because third trimester, just one trimester, and I think I could get it done without being 20 something minutes long. So sorry for the last one. Okay, so symptoms. Now, again, if you haven't seen my first and second trimester update, I will link them below because I'm not gonna go over some of the ones that ended. Um, granted, most of them did not end. But here's what I'm feeling for third trimester. Out of breath, that's one. Anything makes me out of breath. Um, baby's breech, so like he's literally in my rib cage. I think even if he were head down now, I'd still be out of breath and feeling like I'm being suffocated. So little things make me tired. Um, throwing up, nausea, that lasted the entire pregnancy. I will say third trimester though, like less than half the week is a throw up day, which I'm so grateful for. Today was a throw up day, but only this morning. Normally it's night for me, but again, like it's never like, it's for sure gonna happen at this time. So um, actually the last two weeks have been the best the entire pregnancy for like not throwing up. In the last two weeks, I only threw up like two different meals, which is just wonderful. So third trimester has been better with sickness, um, but then worse with other things. So I'll go into the other things now. Um, insomnia. I feel like I have not slept in like five months. Really, once I hit second trimester, sleeping's just been a pain because you can only sleep on your sides um, or if you're propped up on your back, but even that just hurts. So uh, really the whole night, you're just switching from side to side and you're in pain the entire time. It's just like, what's the lesser evil? Which side hurts the least amount at that moment? And that's how I decide how I'm sleeping. Um, so sleep does not, happen. Naps, also I heard that I'd be napping all the time. Um, I think I've literally only taken like three or four naps this entire pregnancy. I just cannot sleep. Like I'm tired and I want to sleep, but I can't sleep. So again, insomnia. Heartburn all the time, daily. I take Tums all the time. Third trimester, it's like it just clicked. It, I was fine and fine. Still like sick, like in first and second trimester, obviously, but no heartburn. And then third trimester, it just almost like, right when the sickness started getting a little better, the heartburn just hit me in the face. Uh, I, like, and I can't predict what's gonna make it. Like, even water gives me heartburn. Uh, cereal gives me heartburn. Everything gives me heartburn. I think heartburn's just like this normal pregnancy symptom. Um, Oh, belly itching and just being uncomfortable. So obviously your skin is stretching. Third trimester, it tends to get the biggest out of all the trimesters. I want to say like 20-ish weeks is when I started really seeing like a belly come in. Um, and third trimester, it just, it's there now. I know that I'm not as big. I actually, I'm not as big as I expected myself to get. So I don't have any stretch marks yet, although, <laughs> so 48 hours till baby comes out because he's, again, breached when we're doing a C-section at 39 weeks and two days. Um, I'm almost positive that I have a stretch mark coming in at my hip. So it's gonna be one of those things where I'll just have to assess the damage after he's out and I see um, my full stomach is like, there's still like crevices that I like, I like if I look down, like I can't see everything, you know, I have to look in the mirror and I'm like, sometimes like, I don't know if that's just my, depending on what I'm wearing, it will create creases and like red marks. And then I will freak myself out. Um, because yes, I know natural, like stretch marks are natural and it's going to happen. And I have stretch marks from just growing hips and these <laughs> tiny boobs when I was younger. So um, I'm used to stretch marks because I have them already. I just don't want any more. <laughs> but I think the one that I'm getting is literally next to all my other ones. So at the end of the day, like it doesn't really matter. We'll see though. I, again, I have 48 hours left, so that could change. Maybe my stomach will get more because I mean, babies grow every week half a pound. They get fatter. At this point, they're just getting like fat on them. Um, so I don't think I have stretch marks yet, but that could change. That's gonna be like a fourth trimester update for sure. Um, but speaking of belly itching though, 
Um, the one thing I will say that helped it is the bio oil. So I have two belly oils. One's bio oil and one is one that I found on just like online Instagram. It was an ad that popped up and I was like, I'll try it. Um, the bio oil for sure helps more with like the itchiness. I can't promise you it's going to help you not get stretch marks though. Like, it's just going to help that discomfort. So um, even if you're not pregnant, like it's really nice and hydrating for your skin, but especially when you're pregnant, just get it ahead of time and start using it immediately, even before your belly starts growing. Um, it's just going to help prep it for how much it expands and how uncomfortable it's going to get. Um, speaking of uncomfortable, it's just tight all the time when you're in your third trimester. It's just like, it literally feels like you're about to burst. And I don't know how my body keeps expanding because I for sure every day think there's no way that this can get any bigger without just like ripping open. And it does. <laughs> but that's where stretch marks come in. Um, gassy, I burp and fart a lot. <laughs> it's something you just can't control. Um, I feel like I already burped a lot anyways, so. It, but I think I burp more being pregnant. And you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I think that's also just a pregnancy symptom. Um, peeing yourself. This is a wonderful, wonderful third trimester newbie update for me. Um, I sneeze, I have a bad cough attack, or I vomit, I pee. Like, and it's not like I just pee down my leg or anything. It's just like, I dribble out and obviously I have to change undies. So I wear, what helps me with this is wearing a pad or like a liner um, constantly. So I also think that's a normal pregnancy symptom. Hopefully it's not just a me thing. Pooping is one that I was told I would get a lot of constipation and I didn't. I'm on my normal poop schedule, so take for that whatever you way you want <laughs> um i'm tired i don't know why i wrote that twice i put the nap one on there i just added that to the sleep we know that aversions have lightened a little bit so and my other update like i don't have cravings um i thought i would and i just don't like that's not a thing but i have a lot of aversions where i don't want certain things so I will say that I am less picky than I have been first and second trimester. I think it's because I'm throwing up less. But at the same time, I still don't want a lot of things. Babies' movements become painful. So like first and second trimester, it's like, oh, it's like a little fish just like bobbing around and grazing you. And then like third trimester, it's like babies kicking you so hard in the bladder that you're peeing yourself and you're like wincing and like yelling out in pain because whatever organ you have no idea that he kicked just hurts so bad and mine because he's facing my back and he's head up like kicks my colon a lot and it makes me feel like i need to poop and sometimes he kicks like i don't poop myself but like i will have to go to the bathroom soon after uh oh can you imagine if that's how <laughs> it's like a, you peeing and pooping yourself like ni nightmare pregnancy uh, my lady bits feel like they're literally about to fall out of me. Uh, there's just that it's the constant soreness the last couple, I'd say last, last three weeks that has been so uncomfortable and like painful, just like walking is painful. And I, I don't know if that's like, maybe that's what dilating feels like because I'm having a C-section. My doctor doesn't check me for like dilation. So I don't know if that's like a cause of it uh but just it's sore like really sore just feels like there's just this like weight hanging on me um, and then my upper thighs the whole last like two months it feels like i did an intense inner thigh workout and it's so painful and even sleeping with it is painful and like when you're moving side to side like just that whole region and your hips are just throbbing so just more pain. Uh, foot swelling, the last month is really when I noticed it. So some days are better than others. Like my feet are swollen every day now, like the last probably four weeks they've been swollen. But then there's some days where it just feels like they again are going to um, just explode on me. <laughs> and I've checked with my doctor because I know that can be a sign of preeclampsia. 
I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but my blood pressure is like always yeah. wonderful. She's like, I'm not really worried about that. I think it's just like normal pregnancy swelling. Um, none of my shoes fit other than some, like I get sandals on in the morning and then my afternoon. Um, don't dare take them off because they won't fit after that. And then my, uh, what do you call those white sneakers and blinking Air Force Ones, which are normally big, like just loose shoes uh, are really tight on me. So those, I have one pair of sandals and one pair of um, Air Force Ones that like I've been wearing just the last month. I haven't worn anything else. And then the last thing, I think the last thing I want to update on is um, weight gain, which is everyone's, I say everyone's, a lot, of, okay, stretch marks and weight gain is a vanity fear for a lot of people. And I'm not saying that I'm not one of those, I am. So weight gain, I am at 30 pounds now. And I haven't gained anything the last month which surprised me because every week baby's growing half a pound. But my doctor kind of warned me on that because like by the end of second trimester, I started freaking out. I was like, I'm at like 25 pounds already or 20 pounds. I forget where I was at. And I had read something where you should only gain 15, 25 pounds for a pregnancy. And I think that ended up being wrong. That was like, if you're underweight um, or overweight, you should only gain that much. But if you're normal weight, you can gain up to like... 30, 35 pounds um, average. So that made me feel a little better, but I was like, I'm already here and like, I still have third trimester to get through. And I'm like going to just like, am I gonna gain 60 pounds? I don't know. Um, except I never like ate more than I, I felt like I should have during this. And I didn't like eat crazy junk food ever. So she was like, you know, honestly, by the third trimester, you're, um, like insides are so crammed together, it's kind of harder to gain weight because you get fuller quicker. Um, and she wasn't wrong, so I'm uh, I should be when I deliver like 30 pounds, which is fine. I feel like that's at the end of the day not like awful and kind of it. I don't know. I'm like also that weird person that gets excited to like lose that now afterwards. So. We'll see what happens. Um, I think that's all of them. If I remember any other thing that's just like weird, I'll write it in the um, description box or like poof it into the video through my uh, really awful editing skills. Um, I'm also dressed up more than normal today. So like the next video, see like, don't be surprised if I go back to looking like I just woke up and don't have makeup on and kind of like slobbish because um, I just don't like getting ready anymore <laughs> and I know when I have a baby I'm not gonna like that and I really want to do uh, what I packed in my hospital bag but I want to do it after the fact so I can show you like any ridiculous things where I was like you do not need this or the things where I'm like I really did need this or the things where I'm like I needed it and I didn't have it so I feel like an after the hospital visit would be a better one to give you. Plus again I'm only uh, 40 hours, less than 40 hours, I'm like a day and a half away from like having him so I'm not gonna film that in between now and then I'm just telling you right now so okay oh ipsy time almost forgot let's really quickly do this oh I didn't even tell you I got only reason I got dressed up because uh Randall and I and my mom's here uh went down to like this river walk and did some photos and you're gonna hear Max in the background for a few minutes being annoying FYI okay here's right inside let's just pull it out and see I start, oh, this is beautiful. The bag is a different shape. It's normally just like a square, the normal. I think it's $13 a month. And then the big Glam Bag Plus is $28-ish. And I literally just looked this up like a few days ago and I've already forgotten. Um, prices have changed. They went up a few dollars. Still completely worth it though. So we're gonna go through the glam bag first. Um, we have a Black Magic Cocoa Edit Liquid Eyeliner in brown. I don't have any brown eyeliners and I am excited. And it's, I oh, it's Ico. I love this. This is one of my favorite eyeliners. I don't know what brands. I think at one point I got it in Birchbox and Ipsy and maybe another one before but their like liquid liner uh, is beautiful and works really well. 
So can't wait to try that. Eyeshadow palette by Fresh Start. CC Complex Culture. Not heard of that before. I don't, ooh. It's like a mix of some warm and then it looks like one cool color in here. That's pretty, That that's like a really natural throw it on kind of eyeshadow. Not that I really wear eyeshadow anymore. Today I almost did my eyeshadow, but then I decided against it like last minute and then just put like a brightener um, pencil, a highlighter pencil on. We have, do we have another eyeliner or is this a lip liner? Beauty for real lip liner. And it looks like a darky mauve color. I will do close-ups of this. I don't have a lot of lip liners, but I like using them. Just fill my whole lips in and just use it as like a lipstick. I don't ever do like the outline. Do people even do that anymore? I don't know. Lovecraft Beauty, excuse me, LCB Eyeshadow Primer. I love a good primer. Urban Decay will always have my heart, oh. Not that anyone, <laughs> is it burping and hiccuping? Not that anyone else can't make a really good product, but like, I love my Urban Decay one, the purple bottle, the light purple one. Do they have more than one? I think they do. It's hot in here. Ooh, night sweats, like hot flashes. That's another one their trimester brought. Actually, just like the last few weeks, just waking up, just like boiling. And I think, don't think that's gonna go away for probably at least a month. Um, eye Duty Brightening Cream by First Aid Beauty. It's just an eye cream and it's in the cutest tiny little package. That would be good just to take and put in my hospital bag to have because I will probably go through that within the three or four day visit depending how long they make me stay. C-sections make you stay longer. By way, this is a body cleanser. I did not know they made body cleansers. Melrose Place, it must have a smell. This is a hair care brand. I wonder if they're branching or if they've already branched out a while ago into the body care realm. Can't smell it because it has a little metal tip on it, but I like that brand. It does make me break out though, so <laughs> I hope the body cleanser is made to help not break you out, but I get really nervous trying new brands. So that's everything in the glam bag and then the glam bag plus. Ooh, this is beautiful. I like the flowers this month. May flowers, it makes sense to be the theme. Wild beauty is the theme of it. Fresh. <gasps> is this Kate? Is this Kate? I get so excited whenever they stick her stuff in here. Goat milk, moisturizing cleanser. I think they gave the goat milk uh, face moisturizer and I think I still have it and I have not used it yet and now I have the matching cleanser and if you know anything about goat milk it's supposed to be really good for acne prone skin just like sensitive skin and guess what that's my skin and I'm trying to get off of like those heavier uh acidic uh facial stuff because of baby and like doing skin to skin and stuff. I want something more gentle and this is wonderful. So I already know that's gonna be my favorite, but we'll see, we still have a few more things. And then by Rod Rodial Soft Focus Glow Drops, Illuminating Ultimate Glow Primer. This feels really big for a primer. That is really big for a primer. It's like a um, pink, is it? I don't, okay, I don't think it's gonna make my skin pink, but I'm already kind of pink toned. I don't know if I want to make myself pink. Oh, that smells so good. Oh my gosh. Kind of smells like, what's that? Is it Pepto-Bismol, the pink stuff that, oh, whoops, smells really good or tastes really good and smells really good? That's what it smells like to me. Oh, that's not tinting me at all. I don't, I knew it wouldn't. But I also don't see much of a glow there. Wonder if I can just, wonder if I just put that on by itself on my face one of these days. That might be enough like glow to make me feel like the light's mm -hmm. reflecting off of some of my 
acne scarring. I don't know. I will try it. That smells so good. That's, I feel like, going to break me out. But I'll try it. And then we have an eyeshadow palette. They always give eyeshadow palettes. If you're someone that loves eyeshadow and getting new palettes, the Glam Pack Plus is your best friend. So this is from Formula Z, Transforming Beauty. And the packaging is really holographic-esque. Um, don't come at me. I don't know the right terms. It's illuminating. It's shiny, whatever. I think there's going to be a lot of sparkles in here. Oh, that's not an eyeshadow palette at all. What is that? It's a cheek palette. Okay, so there's three sparkle colors and one that's a matte classy act. I gotta be honest, I like my um, cheeks to not be super sparkly, but to each their own. I think that one I am going to be passing on to a friend that loves sparkles. Really miss working at a high school where I could just bring all the stuff in and they would immediately just gobble it up because they love makeup. Okay, is that, no, one more thing, last thing. I feel like that was a tiny glam bag this month, the Glam Bag Plus Hydrating Cream. Use liberally on skin. That's, oh, like why are the ingredients on the front of this? This is not the front, that's the back. This is by Pear Nova Hydrating Cream. Is it just a body cream? I think it is. And I'm looking for sulfites, which tend to make you less hydrated, and it does not have it in it, so that's good. Um, sulfates. Did I say sulfites? Sulfates. Sulfate. Sulfur. So sodium. Whatever. Uh, wonderful. I'm actually on my last body lotion, which is weird because I feel like I always have like a million body lotions laying around. And for some reason, I have like this much left in my entire apartment. So that will get used. So this, this, the eyeshadow palette and Kate Somerville. And I guess the bag counts. I feel like there's normally five. No matter what, like this is a very expensive product. Kate Somerville, Somerville I don't even know how to say her name. Her stuff, whenever I go to Sephora to like, I always go look at it and I never buy it because it's so expensive. This already paid for it. Um, so I'm not like, I feel like the price is worth it still. Favorite goes to the facial cleanser. Okay, gotta go. Uh, sorry, let me see what time we're on on here. Ooh, I don't see it because it just shut off and I turned it back on, so of course not. Um, hopefully this is not huge and I will see you in my maybe hospital bag one next. If you want to see that, leave it in the comments. Okay, love you. Bye.